It is Python on hardware time. Blinka, there blinka, is blinka. a lot going on. Okay. So, whew, first, first up, Dan Halbert did a talk at the SIPB SIPI 50 Physical Computing, and this is one of the best talks I've seen. Um, it's not just because Dan works with us, it just tells our story and the CircuitPython story, and um, it's to a group of computer scientists and MIT folks. So this is a really good talk. Um, it's on YouTube, and we also put it in the newsletter. And you can also, I think, see a link to it on uh, sipb50.mit.edu. Okay, we have some guides. Circuit Python libraries on any computer with the FT232H. Correct. All well, computers can use Circuit Python now. Carter worked on this. It was amazing. He did a great yeah. job. And basically now, you know, if we have sensors that use I2C or SPI or GPIO, you can now connect them to a Mac or Windows or Linux desktop computer and then over USB, uh, use our CircuitPython libraries to communicate with those devices, which is neat because, but, you know, historically you've either had to use a Linux computer with GPIO like Raspberry Pi or a CircuitPython board like a Feather or Circuit Playground Express, yeah. but now you can use any computer. We'll talk about it a little bit more as we get to guides, but that's a good overview. Okay, Hackspace Magazine 23 is out, and you know, you release hardware into the world, you're always a little worried because... Are people gonna like it? People gonna like it or not like it, and congratulations, everyone who worked on this. 10 out of 10, high praise. There's something fundamental and endearing about hardware that is well-engineered to do a single job. Verdict, an easy and fun way to add wow to your Halloween costumes. Thank you so much, Hackspace. And uh, we tried really hard on this one. This was this was a very weird and interesting piece of electronics to do. I'm so what really they're happy. saying is, it's really great that it only does eyes. It only does eyes, um, but it does more. Okay. okay. Uh, congratulations to Farnell. They've shipped 15 million Raspberry Pi units. Um, I decided a long time ago to keep track of it. So if you, the one million mark was in 2013, two million November 2013. 3.8 million, 2014. 5 million, 2015. There's a pattern. 14 and 15 ish million sold by July of 2017. 23 million by December 2018. 25 million March of 2019. And I emailed the Pi Foundation. I said, hey, I'm about to like keep this stat thing going. How many? And they said just north of 28 million. So okay. it's cool. Cool. By the end of the year, 30. I like seeing all these reporters and journalists who come up with numbers and they say like, no source. It's my article, there's only one place that you can get this information. Because we ask Because I asked directly, yeah. <laughs> Turns out you can ask good questions and you'll get good answers. Anyways, um, Cirque de Python snakes its way to Pimeroni. Pimeroni is doing a lot of feather related products, projects and code over at Pimeroni. Check out their GitHub stuff and more and you will see a bunch of Cirque de Python. You just wanted to use this blink of pie. I've been waiting. Next up, we just showed this video, but this is it, thank you. G, showing off the Circuit Playground Express Blue Fruit with a cool tie project. We also posted up another video. This came from Scott. This is from the show until last week of Glider. Glide your way to some code if you want to do iOS or Android or Android coding. Wait, but I, um, does it work on Android? No. Yes, it does. Um, <laughs> you can uh, check out Glider and it is our easy to use wireless way to code with Circuit Python on that later on android no maybe yes yes okay <laughs> not really okay um group gets feather takes flight over there with particle squared um every time there's a, a feather format something we love writing about it people send them to us i got a whole collection we on do group it's gets. an awesome list i'm a backer i think i'll get one of these maybe i don't understand how group gets worked exactly but i put money into this thing and i know maybe i'll get one because it looks like a feather and that's what i wanted so we'll see how that goes we have an update coding for circuit python on ios ios 13.1 something 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 there's been a new update every day since it came out um, is here and if you want to use your ios device specifically an ios ipad it's it's like a computer um, you can do that and it's super cool let me show you how there's a new textbook that's out for people who like textbooks by so, horvath and horvath no. <laughs> yes. yeah it's true it is true and uh, this is updated and it is current and it's the most uh, recent book on the subject of Python and Raspberry Pi and learning IoT. A bunch of Adafruit stuff in this. You will like it. Um, we will have maybe uh, we'll maybe stocking it. We have to figure out if we can get it. 
um, but it is a textbook. So check it out. It's in the newsletter. It's also on our site. We now have 79 boards on circuitpython.org slash download. That means from Arduino to a board that probably starts with Z, E through Z, you can run circuit Python on something. We have every shape and size and color of boards. We're almost up to 100. Can't wait. And with that, we have things like get a Pi board, no problem. New. Now we have CircuitPython support for you Pi got, board. You got a Serpente? Serpente. Cool. Just came out. Yes, both you, flavors. You, you, want, you want a USB-C, STM, feather looking thing? No problem. We got that going on. Coming soon. And then last up, um, we have Blinka, and we have 23 different SBCs. Plus single, that FT232H. Single board computers. Single board computers. And that lets you run Blinka on all of this. All right. Trademark news. All right, so over on the MicroPython <laughs> forums. Yeah, I know. We talked to someone today who's just like, you know, my full-time thing is just dealing with trademarks yeah, like, and licensing. Yeah, do you know anything about trademarks and licensing? Like, that's all I know about. So uh, someone in the, the MicroPython forum said, hey, I wanted to sell my MicroPython board on Taobao, Alibaba, but someone blocked me. They say they own the word MicroPython. And so that's not good. And so what's happening right now in China is someone is squatting, someone is trying to steal mm. the MicroPython name. That's not good. Python has the worldwide trademark on Python, and they're super cool. They're like, hey, here's the things you can do it, here's the things you can't do it. So right now there is someone, they are taking the name and they're saying, we own Python in China, and we only own it, we, you can't do anything. Mm, so, that's not good. so that's not good. So we contacted Damien, creator of MicroPython, yep. and uh, we contacted the Python Foundation lawyers. Yep. We asked our lawyers um, if, they, if they could help, and they will. And we're going to try our best to make sure that MicroPython is for people who work with MicroPython and Python Foundation if they want to use it, but it's not going to be used as a, as a tool to not allow mm -hmm. people to sell boards if they want to sell a board. And the thing that the person wanted to do in the community is like they had a MicroPython compatible board and they just wanted to put it up for sale and that wasn't even okay. Yeah. So that's not cool. So anyways, that's going on. I'll update everyone later. Um, and we also know what's coming next, which is someone's going to try to steal um, Blinka, they'll say they invented Blinka. Um, we've seen that happen before. They're like, oh, I have Blinka. Um, it's like, no, like our little logo. No, and everything. Our friend. There's people that say they're Adafruit in other countries. No. They're not. And so um, it's open source hardware. You can do anything except for that. Just please don't say you're Adafruit. Yes. So we'll get into some of that later because it's open source hardware month. All right, other stuff. Um, this is really cool. I just like the name of this. This is the Easy make oven controller and this is used as a pie portal yeah it looks great i thought this was neat this like is dan's plotting. work in progress okay. he uses the um i squared c port on and a, for the thermocouple and a digital pin to control a toaster oven also used the um power switch tail i think so you didn't have to worry about high voltage nice okay this is the string car this is going to be a new board that's going to be added it's one of those things that goes on a string i like how it's just like a feather that does one thing and one yeah, thing only cool. i like this so you know those free stickers here is uh, daughter computer, dad computer. Nice. They both have the stickers. Um, there's more cool artwork going on with um, the Circuit Python and Moobook in Japan. Just every week, there's more cool artwork. I want to watch this movie. I want this to. This is so cool. This is the best Ghost yeah. in the Shell episode. Yeah. LED eyes making the rounds. They're everywhere. Yes. Everyone has them. Teenage Mutant Ninja LED eyes, and then here's a cool fox. Look at this fox with kind of blinky eyes. Hey. Here's a neat circuit Python project, and I'm going to play a short clip, and I'll tell you what it does. Here's a project I call Tilting Arpeggios. As I tilt the Circuit Playground Express, it plays different notes from arpeggios. Okay, do you remember, like, three minutes ago when I was talking about the Serpente board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Arturo, who's active in the Python community and the Twitters, I really like this quote. It's like, you know what? If if you just update this with the latest circuit Python, you get all this stuff for free. So that's Audio. really neat. Bitbang. Yeah. Displays. Yeah. Fonts. Yeah. I squared C. Yep. Rotary controllers. Yep. Check. Terminal I.O. Yep. Pretty amazing. Okay. Caitlin's dad is instantly making memes of all the things we do. This is kind of cool. Took the eyeballs that we have, Monster Mask, and made an operation game. And so check that out. There's a cool video. Nina was at a conference, and I collect these photos of badges. So everyone's making, you know, 
badges with our badges. And so this is like a super decorated badge. And then uh, this is kind of an Anthony made a badge. And uh, I thought that was cool. This is from Melissa's guide. Yeah. And nice. so people are doing it. They're, they're, they're using this and they're able to use it in multiple conferences. And Toll, Nick was Toll, did a great podcast, Testing Code. And it's all about improving programming education. Listen to it. It's worth it. It's really good, especially if you're an educator. And then also, Nicholas picks up this great HyperCard. If you liked HyperCard and you like making your own interactive stories, it has a great guide, a great video, and you can see some of the work in progress. Because there was so much stuff going on with the newsletter, I made a little video that just shows all of it very fast. And here it is. That's some nice music. Too. Scroll through it. It's Sorry. practically an entire magazine devoted to Python on hardware every single week. Sign the data for daily.com. Free. Oof. Okay. 